today is clue number nine of the May Mystery Quilt Along, the last clue. Hello, Judith and Lisa. The last clue, and so I'm gonna turn around and show you um, how to do that little bit. Hey, Glenda and Beth. All right, so let me turn this around. Yes, it is very exciting. Hey, Noreen. Okay, so let me move it over here. So these are the pieces that we have today and that came in your cutting instructions. So all you had to do was sew them together into pairs and then once they make a pair, you sew them together. So once that happens, it looks a little bit like this. And you know, you have your opposing seams as before. And I have this little board here because that's, I, I like to have a hard surface, surface for finger pressing. So basically I finger press things if they're smaller, you know, I don't do very long strips, that doesn't work. But when they're smaller, I finger press them first. And if, if then things work out the way I want it to, and there's a point the way I, where I like it, then I'm gonna press it with an iron. And I just put my iron on it. And so here are the pieces, and there is my dark piece. So that's not a very long clue today, but what I thought I would show you is some cutting but before I do that let me switch it back to the different uh, settings I have the dark and the light and let me just scooch that over I don't know if you can see it I'm trying to not drop my iPad from this thing here so can you see the light one so this is the reveal of the light version with the light background and as you can see I have used some scrappy stuff here in my greens so they're not all the same color but the value is the same so it reads as the same color but all my flowers are the same color all my flowers have the light uh, and the bright they're all the same color so then on the dark version oops get back over here so on the dark version all my greens are basically the same but i have kind of changed around a little bit on my light and bright for the little flower blossoms so what do you think it's pretty cool it's kind of a cactus um garden if you will so i hope you really you like the design i really like the design so here up here you have your little end pieces that we're doing today and the pieces that you needed to cut for the side and that kind of finishes it off it kind of frames it it finishes it off but it also does something else for you um yeah, I just love the dark background on this one. But what it does for you, it once you sew this together, so I've so the next step is to sew these into pairs, your blossoms basically, and then you're gonna make it make it into strips. So as soon as they're into strips, I would anything that is enclosed by seams all the way around, this is the time to top stitch it. Then once you have your strips done and you join some of your strips and at the very, you, you're going to do all these other little pieces. As soon as something is enclosed by a seam, you can, you know, uh, top stitch it and peel it back like I showed it on the very tiny ones. Now, once you've done that and you put your borders on, they look short, but you know, once your seam allowances are in there, it's all good. Then you're going to have a seam over top of this. Let me go over here, over top of here. And that's when you're going to be peeling back these pieces right here. So... I think that uh, you've, hopefully you've watched how I did this. I think these are easier because they're bigger. So I think you're not going to have any problem with that. But I'm always there for questions if you have questions. So about these strips and how to cut these. They are 34 and a half inch strips. So what happens if you don't have a lot of space and you don't have something that is 30 some inches long? I'm going to show you uh, how I cut my strips and how I kind of cheat and cut my strips. I don't know if it's a cheat. It's just, you know, making use of the space you have. So let me show you how I do that. So the first thing I do, <clears throat> I know that my strips are three and a half inches wide. So I'm not going to wrestle with the whole big piece of fabric. So I know that three and a half times four is about 14. So here's a 14 inch ruler. So I've just cut it about 14. Well, I've already cut something off of that. But yeah, so I cut it about 14 inches, a little bit more. 
because things can be adjusted. And then I have a much smaller piece to work with and I don't have to wrestle with all this fabric. So <clears throat> let me show you how I cut my strips. So this is the fold. And so I've already cut from this side. So what I do is I place the fold on one of those lines. I really don't like to use the mat for measuring and I, and I usually don't, but it helps to kind of lay it out and to make sure everything is straight, okay? So then I would take my ruler and my rotary cutter and then I do my three and a half. So one, two, three, yes, I still count each one of them. I don't know why. I should be able to read the numbers, but I feel it's safer if I count them. Okay, so, and right here on the fold, that's when I'm gonna place one row of those little marks all the way around. I don't like to place the solid line. I like to place the one under it because, um, let me see if you can see that, sort of, yes. Because it's just easier for me to see if there's a little piece of fabric peeking out between those two little pieces. So I also check and make sure that underneath I have two layers and something hasn't crept back there into the nowhere where I can't see it. Okay, so now I'm on the half mark, but it's still good. And I want to do three and a half, one, two, three and a half. And I push down pretty hard, and I hope you can see that because I'm probably in the way now. And I put a little, I give a little running start and I just move forward into the cut. And now I'm running out of board, but that's okay. I move forward into the cut and that gives me the strip that I want. Okay. So then I'm going to turn my strip around. I've made it just a little bit bigger and I'm going to make sure it's nice and flat lay my ruler back on there and then I can finish up on the other side here I'm starting in nowhere but that's okay let's see if it works yep so that's how I would cut my strip um, using you know the one fold method one fold is enough okay so one more thing here is a strip that is longer I'm just throwing all these pieces behind me here's a strip that is longer now let's say you don't have uh, enough space on your sewing area and you only have that small little mat like I do. So what I do is if I know that I need a piece that is three and a half by, what was it, 34 and a half, I actually divide that in half, the 34 and a half, which gives me 17 and a quarter. And so I have a folded strip and I measure 17 and a quarter from the fold to the pieces that are not folded, to the, to the salvage. So let me show you how I do that. Okay. So right here on the edge where the zero is, I'm gonna actually let my cutting board help me with that. And you can use your ruler also, of course. And you wanna do 17 and a quarter. So 17 and a quarter is what I put on here. And I double triple check just to make sure. And then when I cut that, I've cut it double and now I have 34 and a half. Does that make sense? It's just something I do because not everybody has, because not everybody has a, a large sewing room and you know, a whole lot of space, so. <laughs> well, it's always safer to count for me too. And you know, if you've ever been in my class, you know I probably count in German, but it's all good. It's just my math brain working out. So, so I hope you had fun with this and you learned something and uh, I can't wait to see some of the quilts and what I thought we would do maybe in a week next Friday. That'll give you a week to finish up stuff and people catching up and, you know, stuff gets in the way sometimes. And then maybe we can uh, have another meeting. I can have another Facebook live and, and uh, you know, we can talk about the, the stuff you did and please send me pictures. Maybe I can somehow, uh, or we can use Facebook to show each other all the quilts we're, we're making. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know which one I like better, the, the black quilt or the light quilt, but um, I like both of them, so it's always fun. I always like what I'm working on. I'm lucky that way. That's why, that's right. That is right. So, did you guys have any questions with anything that I can answer while we're on? You're welcome, Jen. It's my pleasure. 
I have a lot of fun teaching people something new and you know so I'm trying to read what people are writing yeah so let's meet maybe in a week and I'll get back on Facebook or please in the meantime post your quilts and I would love to collect them all I would love to collect them on maybe a Pinterest page if that's okay with everybody and uh, so we can all see what everybody's doing and then maybe put a link out there so everybody can look and see what people have been doing. So in the future, I'm planning on, uh, yeah, I do like the black too. In the future, I'm planning on doing a, a pattern on that. So I'm thinking I might do a different size. I might enlarge it. I would really like to hear some of your thoughts. If you think this would make a great bed quilt, if I either add borders or even enlarge the individual blocks, what do you guys think? Let me know on Facebook. And I will see you next Friday. Happy quilting. I'm excited. We're at the end here. Clue number nine. And you guys all did so fantastic. I look forward to opening the Facebook every day to see all the different versions what people are making. So have a great uh, week and great weekend. And I will see you in a week next Friday. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you all.